Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome or welcome back to Chef Vic Cuisine. Today, we're making jelly-filled donuts or soufgan yolk. Now, this is often a delicacy for Israeli holidays, but this jelly-filled donut style can be found all over the world. And this recipe is really easy to make and super delicious, and I can't wait for you guys to try it at home. So, let's get started. So to get this started, in the bowl of a stand mixer, we want to add in half a cup of warm water, warm to about 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, or 38 to 43 degrees Celsius, two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast, and this amount normally comes in one standard packet, as well as one tablespoon of granulated white sugar. Mix these all together until they're well combined. Allow the yeast to proof, and this should take about 10 minutes and you're gonna see that the yeast mix puffs up a bit and becomes foamy. Now you wanna add in a total of two tablespoons worth of unsalted butter softened to room temperature. I like dividing all that butter into half tablespoon increments and adding that to the bowl. Following that up with a half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Then we're gonna add a third cup minus one tablespoon of granulated white sugar, one teaspoon of salt, and one and three fourths cup of all purpose flour. You want to add on your whisk attachment and whisk this mixture for about 15 seconds on medium speed. After the first 15 seconds, you want to add in two large eggs at room temperature and continue whisking this mixture until the eggs have just combined with the rest of the batter. Now you want to detach your whisk attachment and add in another one and three fourths cup of all purpose flour to the bowl. And now using a paddle attachment, you want to mix this batter for another two minutes. The resulting dough should only be slightly sticky to the touch, so after the first two minutes of kneading the dough, you want to test to see how elastic the dough is, and if it's too sticky, feel free to add another quarter cup of flour and mix it again until the dough is pretty easy to handle. Your final dough should easily come off of the bowl it's in, and now it's ready to be kneaded by hand. So you want to transfer the dough to a lightly floured surface, and continue to knead the dough until it's smooth. And this should take roughly about another four to five minutes. And once the dough is looking like this, you wanna place it in a large bowl sprayed with a non-stick spray. I like adding an additional layer of non-stick spray on top of the dough. And then I cover the bowl with plastic wrap and allow this to rise until it's doubled in size. And this normally takes about one to one and a half hours. Real quick, I wanted to drop in to say I hope you're enjoying the recipe thus far, and I can't wait to show you guys what I have cooked up for next week. So if you wanna see a preview of that, make sure you stay until the end of this video for a sneak peek of what we're cooking next week. Now that our dough has risen beautifully, we wanna remove the plastic wrap and punch the dough down to release all that trapped air. Now you wanna transfer the dough to a lightly floured surface, and using a lightly floured rolling pin, you wanna roll out the dough to about a quarter inch thickness. And once that's done, I like using a two and a half inch diameter cookie cutter to create 20 discs of dough. And you won't end up with 20 discs at first, so you're gonna to have to cut out as many as you can from the first roll out of the dough. Take the excess, roll that again into a flat surface and continue to cut out additional discs of dough, but you're ultimately gonna end up with about 20 donuts from this recipe. Cover these all loosely in plastic wrap and allow these discs to rise for another 15 minutes. And while that's rising, you wanna preheat your deep fryer or large pot of vegetable oil to 365 degrees Fahrenheit or 185 degrees Celsius. Once the oil reaches temperature, you wanna try one donut first to test the oil. And you're gonna fry these donuts for about 40 seconds per side. And a good sign to know that they're ready is that both sides of the donut should have a nice golden brown color to them. And once that first donut is fried, you wanna remove it from the oil and place it on a paper towel lined plate to drain any excess oil from it. Then we're gonna to toss it in a small bowl of white sugar until all sides are nicely coated. But just to give you a close up look at the first donut, you have a nice sugar texture on the outside and cracking into this, you can see the inside of the donut is light and fluffy. 
So now in batches of four at a time, you wanna fry the donuts again, 40 seconds per side until they're all golden brown. And using a strainer, you just wanna place the donuts onto a paper towel lined plate and quickly roll the donuts in sugar while they're still warm. And to repeat this process for all the remaining donuts. And now that all our donuts have been fried and coated, you wanna take a large wooden skewer and make a hole in the side of each donut. And for the next step, you wanna fill a pastry bag fitted with a thin piping tip with your filling of choice. In this video, half of my donuts are gonna have a raspberry jam filling, and the other half are gonna have a chocolate hazelnut filling. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite filling of a donut is. So depending on what filling you're choosing, you're gonna pipe about one tablespoon's worth of the filling into each donut. And you just wanna repeat that process with all your remaining donuts. And with that, your jelly-filled donuts or soufgan yolk are ready to serve and enjoy. And just like that, you've made these amazing donuts right at home. I totally recommend filling these donuts with different kinds of jam for a variety of flavors. But this recipe is perfect for those large Saturday breakfasts. And In cracking into a couple of these, you can see that the filling is throughout the donut, and each bite of this donut is going to melt in your mouth. As always, this recipe and many more can be found in my cookbook, Chef Vic Cuisine Volume 3, Upgrading Your Inner Chef. And that's available on Amazon, and I'll be sure to leave a link to that in my description box. And feel free to click the pop-up on your screen for more information on that as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this recipe, and if you did, make sure to smash that like button for me. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Victor, and welcome to Chef Vic Cuisine. I like to share new recipes each and every week that you can make for yourself, your family, or your friends. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to click that subscribe button too. And sharing is caring, so if you enjoy this recipe and think someone else will too, feel free to share this with all your family and friends. And stay tuned for next week for an amazing fall recipe, my autumn soup. Bursting with flavor and super easy to make. I can't wait for you guys to try this one. And my next few recipes are going to be great for both Thanksgiving and Christmas. So stay tuned for all of those to come. And so we're going to start off nice and easy with this delicious soup. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Check out more recipes on my page now. YouTube thinks you'll like this one, so let's see if they're right. And I'll see you next time on another episode of Chef Vic Cuisine. And until then, peace.